I was a troublemaker. I was a bad student. Three months before graduation, I got kicked out of high school. If you could summarize me in one word as an adolescent, the word I think most people who knew me then would be delinquent. And I'm a child of the Great Recession. I, I lived through the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression. And I know better than to trust government. You don't change the financial system by asking for it. I had been looking for a way to create change in the world at scale. And Bitcoin had the inkling of the sort of potential to change the world. My parents were not exactly enamored with my newfound obsession, but they couldn't be mad that I was going out and founding a nonprofit and organizing students and getting written about in the news. When I had first discovered it in 2011, Bitcoin was worth less than $10. By 2013, it had gone up to $100 and it looked like it was going up much further. I first bought Bitcoin at around $200 when it was first rallying in 2013. And I ended up selling at $1,000, thinking it was a bubble, not having any appreciation for the technology. By the time anyone watches this, uh, the price will be something far different, but today it's uh, $16,000 or so. It's been the most insane month of trading and price movement in the history of this technology. Bitcoin, to me, it was never about the money. What excited me about Bitcoin was the technology. The idea that you can have a form of money that's independent from the state, it's a very powerful concept. It's literally like a Swiss bank account in your phone. And that's an incredibly powerful concept. The reason why the crypto castle, my house, exists what we had created was quite magical, and so I continued to uh, rent this house out to incredible entrepreneurs, young people, technologists, programmers, many core developers, founders in this industry have stayed at this house. Calm AI, a self-driving car startup, was founded in my basement. What I hope for this place, and the reason why I live here, is like, yes, I could afford a very nice luxury apartment now, but I'd much rather have a house full of brilliant, brilliant people that inspire me every day.